from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Monday, October the 3rd, 2022. We open with more violent incidents in the West Bank. The Times of Israel reports that today, while Israeli troops were operating in the Jilazun refugee camp to arrest a terror suspect, the IDF said that a ramming attack was attempted against the forces who responded by firing at and neutralized the two suspects. Yesterday morning, the IDF tweeted a shooting attack was carried out toward a vehicle said to be a taxi cab and a bus near the city of Nablus. The driver of the vehicle was lightly injured and evacuated for medical assistance. And yesterday evening, the IDF said that shots were fired toward civilians and IDF soldiers who were conducting security activities also near the city of Nablus. The soldiers, the IDF wrote, responded with live fire and are currently searching the area for suspects. An IDF soldier was lightly injured in that shooting and evacuated for medical treatment. Israeli Prime Minister Yair Lapid today led the European Union Israel Association Council, the first time that it has convened in over a decade. The foreign ministry said this historic meeting represents a diplomatic breakthrough that will strengthen Israel's standing across the globe and contribute to economic diplomatic ties between Israel and the EU and the advancing of bilateral cooperation in a number of fields. Lapid addressed the council via video link on issues including stopping Iran from obtaining nuclear weapons and reaffirming strong support for Ukraine. Lapid also reiterated support for a two-state solution, which he had expressed at the UN General Assembly, stressing, though, that the Palestinians need to put an end to terrorism and incitement for that to happen. High Representative for EU Foreign Affairs Josep Borrell, who took part today, said ahead of the meeting that the EU and Israel have a strong bilateral relationship and spoke also of the benefits of the gathering and of Lapid's support for a two-state solution. We want the resumption of a political process that could lead, can lead, to a two-state solution and a comprehensive regional peace. Today is a good occasion to show our determination to have a positive and fruitful relationship with Israel, pushing for peace. Well, in his first response to the nationwide protests taking place in Iran, Iran Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei accused the United States and Israel for being behind what he called the riots. The protests followed the death of 22-year-old Masa Amini last month while she was in the custody of Iran's morality police. Amini had been arrested for not wearing her hijab, her head covering, properly. The Associated Press reports that Khomeini today told police students in Tehran these riots and insecurities were designed by America and the Zionist regime and their employees. Reuters, meanwhile, reported that White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre told members of the press aboard Air Force One today, we're alarmed and appalled by reports of security authorities responding to university students' peaceful protests with violence and mass arrests, that students in Iran are rightly enraged by Amini's death. Israel's foreign ministry shared a video of support last week, as well showing Israeli women standing in solidarity with Iranian women. And we will have more for you on the fight for justice for women in Iran coming up after this newscast tonight. The International Space Station's newest commander, Samantha Cristoforetti, has sent regards to Israel and shared some incredible photos of the country from space. The Italian astronaut who took command of the ISS last week has been sharing photos of various parts of the planet since then and this past Saturday tweeted Shalom and hello to Israel and the cities of Haifa and Tel Aviv at night, also sharing photos of the Dead Sea. Christophe Reddy is the fifth European commander of the ISS. She is the first European woman in that role. 
Yom Kippur, the Jewish Day of Atonement, begins tomorrow, Tuesday evening. And as always, we will bring you services here on JBS. For tomorrow night at 6 o'clock Eastern, we have live Kol Nidre Reform services from Central Synagogue, and then Orthodox services from the Hampton Synagogue at 8 o'clock, and then at 9 o'clock, Reform services from Central. And the following day, Wednesday, Yom Kippur services throughout the day. More information can always be found on our website, jbstv.org. Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Monday, October the 3rd. At 7 o'clock, Rabbi Benjamin Bleck traces the origins of the Kaddish as the mourner's prayer. At 7.30, Eric Goldman is joined by Sarah Botstein and Lynn Novick co-directors of the Ken Burns documentary series, The U.S. and the Holocaust. That's on tonight's Jewish Cinematheque. At 8 o'clock, Abigail Pogrebin speaks with Josh Lambert to discuss the anti-Semitic trope of a Jewish literary mafia. At 8.30, a look at the Jewish basis for social conscience. At 9, Mark Golub sits down with Rabbi Daniil Hartman on L'Chaim. At 10, David Gregory speaks to Erica Brown about faith and Jewish identity. And coming up next tonight, as I mentioned, Shahar Azani speaks with influencer and activist Dr. Sheila Nazarian about social media advocacy and the pursuit of justice for women in Iran. And that's the JBS News Update for Monday, October the 3rd, 2022. I'm Tisha Bader. I will be back with the news after Yom Kippur on Thursday. Stay healthy, stay well, and Gmar Chatima Tova. Thank you.